All right, so Elon Musk just provided an update on Tesla's full self-driving software. If you're not familiar, Tesla has this end-to-end -end neural network, fancy way of saying an artificial intelligence that has learned how to drive the car basically from point A to point B. The driver still has to pay attention, but there's more and more footage of this car being able to drive itself in almost all situations. And the biggest improvement from this AI type of driving the car is that it's dramatically reduced how often the driver has to interact with the car to make sure that it's going the right place, that it's in the right lane, that it's making a right turn, a left turn, stop at a stop sign, so on and so forth. And on X or Twitter, depending <laughs> what you want to call it, we just got an update from Elon Musk uh, about the improvements for the upcoming versions. So here's a post from Holmar's catalog, Omar, shout out Omar, AI is taking off at an insane pace. And Elon replied to this post saying, yeah, seeing it everywhere. But the very important bit about Tesla is in this next paragraph. By the way, 12.4 goes to internal release this weekend and limited ex external beta next week, roughly five times to 10 times improvement in miles per interventions versus 12.3. 12.5 will be out in late June. We'll also see a major improvement in miles per intervention and a single stack, no more implicit stack on highways. Now, there's a lot in there uh, for us to dissect. And we'll start with this first bit here. 12.4 goes internal release this weekend and limited external beta next week. So what's likely to happen here is that this weekend, uh, the employees at Tesla will get an update that has the next version of self-driving uh, FSD 12.4, and they'll likely use it for a few days. And then it will go to a very limited number of people uh, that are also Tesla owners that are signed up for the FSD beta testing. They'll get the software, they'll test it a bunch to make sure that it's good, and then it's going to go wide to more people. But the next bit here, I actually really want to deep dive roughly five to 10 times improvement in miles per interventions versus 12.3. Now, miles per interventions is the huge variable for self-driving technology to take effect. When a company is trying to release a self-driving platform, self-driving car to a jurisdiction, the people in that jurisdiction, the safety people, are going to want the car to drive itself. <laughs> There's an account on X, uh, Elias Martinez, who also runs teslafsdtracker.com that has data around how many interventions the current version of FSD has. And so what we can do is we can take that website's data and try to understand how far away Tesla is from becoming a full self-driving or self-driving taxi network or a robo-taxi network. And so if we go on that website on fsctracker.com, this website gathers a bunch of data from Tesla owners everywhere that have FSD beta downloaded in their cars with 12.3 3.6, which is the latest version here. There's about 8,000 miles of recorded data. But the really important thing from this dashboard is we can also get how many disengagements per mile people are recording from their drives. And this is what these lines are. So 12.3.x, which is the latest branch of the latest version of full self-driving, overall miles, it's about 360 miles until a critical disengagement and 190 city miles until a critical disengagement. So the 360 is total and the city miles is 190. But now the 360 miles per uh, critical disengagement, it becomes our gauge to understand how close Tesla is to releasing self-driving to the masses, meaning that you have a car that can actually drive itself where you don't have to pay attention. Fortunately for us, there is a website out there that is tracking all the disengagements from all the self-driving providers in California. 2023 disengagement reports from California. This is from the last driver license holder.com. Now the biggest piece of data that I want us to look at is over here on this chart right here, which tracks miles per disengagement for all the self-driving companies in that state. And the biggest one I want to focus on is Waymo. So Waymo has about 17,000 miles per disengagement versus Tesla's uh, self-driving platform that you still have to pay attention is 360. So you can see that Waymo is way, 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 way farther along. But the interesting thing is that Elon Musk is pointing to 12.4, which is the version that's going to come here in the next week or so. It's going to improve miles per intervention somewhere between 5 to 10x. And so if we do a very quick math, super rough, this is not scientific, but if we take the 360 miles per disengagement and 10 times that, then you get a number that's much closer to, say, 3,000 miles per disengagement or 3,600 miles. And if we read the follow-up 
post that he put out there, which is 12.5 will be out in late June. We'll also see a major improvement in MPI and a single stack. I'll talk about this in a little bit here, but major improvements in MPI. What this also implies is that it, it will go from, say, 3,600 now to 3,000 or 3,600 in the next week or two. And then with 12.5 in June, with that version, it could go up to, I don't know, 10,000 miles per disengagement, potentially 20,000 miles per disengagement. And what's interesting now is that if we track Tesla's progress towards a self-driving robo-taxi platform and Waymo, which by the way, has by far the most miles recorded in California, about 3.7 million miles, then you have a sort of formula here that says, okay, so if Tesla continues on their path, of these massive improvements with their AI approach of solving self-driving, then there could be a world here. There could be a world. I'm not saying this is definitely going to happen, but there could be a world where Tesla can approach the same level of miles per disengagement as Waymo in California this year. So this year, Tesla could have a software out there that performs just as good, if not better potentially, than Waymo does from a miles per disengagement. The reason why I pick Waymo is that number one, again, Waymo has by far the most miles recorded in the city, and it's likely to face the most amount of difficult or complex situations. And number two, they are approved. So Waymo is approved to operate in places like California, in places like Phoenix and Austin and potentially other places as well. And so now there is a route for Tesla to get approved to operate a self-driving platform as long as it performs as well as Waymo and potentially even better. And one of the places where Tesla could perform even better is since they're moving to a single stack for 12.5 version 12.5 FSD. What this basically means is that the current highway stack for self-driving in 12.3 is still using some of the old code. And so with 12.5, the highway stack as well is going to go to the new code, which should dramatically lower interventions on the highway and not just in the city. The biggest advantage Tesla has here with FSD is their scalability. Because it's so cheap and because the ability to drive itself is driven by an artificial intelligence with just eight cameras instead of tens of thousands of dollars of hardware on the vehicle, this means that they're able to have this thing work in a lot more places a lot more quickly than a Waymo or other company can. And there's a video I want to show you that I'm still trying to get confirmation on, but it's very, very interesting. People in the comments are saying this is legit, but this is a video of FSD allegedly driving through uh, the streets of Moldova in Europe without this engagement. Engagements. One of the reasons you can tell it's self-driving, it's because it has this blue thing on the road here. This means that the car is operating with self-driving technology. It seems like there is no uh, feet on the pedals can't see the steering wheel, so that's why I can't really confirm this for sure. But what's really interesting here is that you have a car that's driving itself on a road that is not technically turned on for the software, right? So which, which means that now you have a AI brain that's able to analyze roads that it's not familiar with, uh, uh, signs that it's not familiar with, so on and so forth, but, but it's still able to navigate the surroundings. As you can see here that it goes from orange to red and the car stops, right? And so what this shows, I think, is that the whole approach behind artificial intelligence, where it works as a human, not necessarily a machine, where, you know, you or I could go say to, I don't know, you know, I was just in Ireland last year and they drive on the opposite side of the road. And I'm not Irish. I'm not familiar with their style of roads, but I can get my rental car in Ireland from the airport, have, having never driven in Ireland before, and within five to 10 minutes, I can figure out how to drive because I kind of get used to it and I use context clues and sort of the similar signage that I would see on Europe in Europe versus the United States to drive. And it seems like the artificial intelligence software is doing the same exact thing as long as this video is legit, okay? But it's I'm having a hard time seeing how this is not legit. It does look very, very legit. If you have any information on this in the comments, please let me know. Because if this is actually accurate and this is actually happening, then the implications of it are very far-reaching, meaning that Tesla could start doing self-driving in countries outside of the United States a lot quicker than people expected because it doesn't require this overhaul of, of the software to have it work in different areas. It's clear, if this is true, that the brain just knows how to drive because it knows how to drive, not because there's somebody writing code that says, this is how you drive. 
It just knows how to drive. And if that's true, then the long term implications for the specific solution are very, very huge. Again, because the cost related to getting this thing outfitted in a car, a couple thousand bucks versus a couple hundred thousand dollars like a Waymo turns into something that Tesla could potentially start to license. And this is, again, hinted at on X from Mr. Elon Musk. So there's a post from Matt Smith. I recently had a talk with a friend who works for an auto OEM. An OEM is basically a, a legacy automaker. Think about it that way. He had been trying FSD beta V12 to do some research for his work and was really impressed with it. Without much prompting from me, he told me that their company's strategy was just to wait to see what approach would works best for solving autonomy and then to implement it, quote unquote, more efficiently. Good luck with that. <laughs> and then I replied to that and I said, that just means, you know, let's buy it from Tesla to which Elon Musk actually replied. And he said, we're happy to sell it. And then I made a stupid joke. OK, but essentially what, what that again, that that picture is being, being painted here, that it seems like Tesla is truly on route this year to come out with a self-driving software solution that's going to be potentially just as good, if not better, than a competing Waymo on cars that are already in the fleet that have been out there for years at a fraction of the cost that could work overseas much, much faster than people realize, that could be all across the United States much faster than people realize. And if people can't really compete with that, Tesla is very willing to sell that software and that hardware stack and whatever else entails to get that thing in a car to other companies so that they can stay relevant. Because the question becomes, if you have a car that costs $20,000, $25,000 to manufacture and it can drive itself, why would anybody else buy anything else, right? Still has to come to fruition. Tesla has to prove it out. We need to see it in the data. That's why websites like teslafsdtracker.com are so freaking impressive. But 2024 is really gearing up to be honestly a super exciting time to be a Tesla fan, a Tesla investor, a self-driving fan, an EV fan, just somebody, a technology fan, right? Somebody who really appreciates uh, high-end technology. And it really paints a picture that artificial intelligence is not just this weird bubble or this weird thing that has a lot of empty promises. I'm sure there are going to be companies out there that are going to ride on the hype train just like anything else, you know, that's game-breaking. Some people will pretend that it's game-breaking when it's really not. But we're already seeing a lot of use cases that it's actually a legitimate force for humans to solve very difficult problems much, much quicker. And self-driving technology could be one of the biggest uh, beneficiaries of that technology here in the next couple of weeks or next couple of months, potentially. So let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this content, like and subscribe. If you want to support, links in the description below. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye, everybody.